And I just want to share uh, the ending of the 2014 part of this tale uh, until the next exciting episode, which is in 2016. Um, but after that meeting, I was very stressed out and concerned about the hospital's uh, uh, powers decision to throw up friction between uh, me and re exercising my right to record the meeting. So I sent uh, Don't miss a an email to the CEO and to the board chair with an attached attorney general's opinion that clarified the, you know, I thought indisputable right of uh, someone to record a no public meeting. Um, I think it was an opinion that had a, a similar case for a county. In any case, I said, I need a recording to do my job. And I, it looks like I have a right to do this and I want to avoid any public confrontations. If you want to take time, if you want to spend time arguing with me why I should not record, how about we do it in private? That's what I basically said. I was like, let's avoid doing it in a public meeting. Heck, I'm even offering to them, let's do it off the record so it's not in an email that could be brought up and shown to people later. So I send this email. The CEO says he defers to the board chair and the board chair says in uh, her email that uh, it's the board decision whether we record, it's not my decision. And basically uh, just argues about it. Now, uh, I get called in to a meeting between uh, the board chair, CEO, and myself uh, an hour right before the, uh, the next board meeting, which I was going to record, and I told them I'm going to record it. In this meeting, um, I'm just going to try to remember what was said, because we did not record it. It was off the record. But it turns out it's actually an important meeting. In this meeting, uh, they basically told me that uh, they think it's likely the board will vote to record all meetings from now on, so to avoid um, having a uh, conflict with me recording them and them not having a uh, equipment and you know plan for how to do it themselves. And then they asked me to not record the meeting that day because they haven't don't have a policy yet in place. And I was like, well, I mean, I'm definitely getting an audio recording of the meeting today. Whether or not I actually do it doesn't matter to me. I'm getting an audio recording of all meetings from now on, unless I see a reason not to. Um, I didn't really say this explicitly. I was just like inside, I'm just wrestling with what they're at. It's like they're trying to save face by having me not record the meeting with, you know, ignoring their objection and their lack of participation in that. Uh, and so I told them, if I can find somebody else to press record before the meeting, um, I will do that. But you're only giving me like a few minutes between this meeting and that meeting. So otherwise I'm recording the meeting, but I'll see what I can do. And, uh, but then one of the last things I asked was, uh, so after you guys vote to record meetings yourself, and I still am taking out my personal recording and recording, are you going to give me any trouble? And I was told very clearly, or maybe it wasn't clearly, but I was told after we pass this that they don't care what I do with my personal recorder. So, <laughs> So, uh, I left that meeting believing, okay, I'll find someone to record it today. And then starting at the next meeting, they'll have their own recording equipment. And then, uh, I'll just be able to record if I want to or whatever. And we'll see if they record it reliably and if it's easy for me to get to the recordings and see if it like works for me. Eventually I did stop recording personally. I kept on for a while, 
and then eventually I stopped because it seemed they were recording reliably. And then, so I thought we were done, and I thought they didn't care what I did with my own personal recorder. In the back of my mind, I should have been thinking, well, what if we have a meeting off-site where they don't have their recording equipment like we did in Chelan in 2014 and 15? No, it must have been just 2015 we had the, Ch the Chelan meeting. Yeah, where are you? Um, and... Anyways, but I thought we were done, and at the 2015 Chelan meeting, when I went and turned on my recorder, I was a little worried that they would flip out again, but they didn't. They even just sort of, you'll hear at the beginning, they just acknowledge that I'm recording it. But then at the 2016 Chelan meeting, uh, you'll, you will see what happens. We're off-site, and... It's just uh, the board with a new one new commissioner and uh, chief finance officer and CEO and board secretary probably no 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 board secretary anyway so uh, start the meeting I start recording it and they object for 15 minutes I listen to them debate their objection to it and have to repeatedly say I am exercising my right to record. Don't know why this, uh, they suddenly had this change of uh, heart. They basically seem to just be repeating the exact same arguments from 2014, ignoring like all the time in between. It was almost like a glitch in the matrix, how incredibly different and uh, sudden and regressive their thinking suddenly was. There was apparently no thought or reflection by anyone in the group that uh, they might have made a mistake the first time they tried to stop me from recording. No one had considered from any feedback they had been given by people who had listened to the audio recording of that meeting or who were in attendance or who were in the media um, or read a newspaper article about the controversy Apparently no feedback cycle of any sort gave the uh, four, three commissioners and CEO any reason, no, no feedback from, say, the lawyer that they apparently were in great communication with. He did not give them any guidance or coaching to dissuade them from having another public confrontation where they try to stop someone from recording. So they do it again. And then after this meeting, uh, which, you know, you can listen to the recording if you want to, I am uh, shocked and incredibly stressed out. I have never been uh, so aggressively, hostily confronted by a group in such an um, inappropriate way, inappropriate forum with inappropriate language, all sorts of uh, threatening behavior. Oh, not all sorts, just like, you know, threatening language and, and uh, one threatening a uh, physical move of storming out of the room or standing up, I'd say, aggressively from the table is the first aggressive move. And then storming out of the room is not actually uh, the aggressive aggressive move. It's kind of a retreat um, or a withdrawal from the group, but no one believed you with withdrawing. Anyways, um, so, so I uh, had transcripts made of both those meetings and I, many of the meetings. Um, both those meetings where the they attempted to stop me for recording and a transcript made of the meeting that uh, in between in 2015. Um, and uh, published them all in a book form um, to just make sure it was on the record that this is what happened. Now, if anyone ever wants to like assist in analyzing the meaning um, or implications, the right or wrong or good or bad, right? Right. So I'm a little bit of historical analysis of uh, the history of these three meetings. That would have been appreciated, but no one found it that interesting. So I just sat there, very few people paying any attention. And over the last like three months, I guess I've been doing what I thought other people might do if they uh, got any interest in this story. Uh, I'm just doing my own sort of analysis and breakdown and mashup and artistic uh, 
work and philosophical analysis and further research and investigating and just publishing all those results online, basically waiting for the world to give an opinion, a judgment. They don't know who uh, to look for to cast judgment over these events. They don't know if the justice system is really the appropriate place. Our justice system is not really um, reliable. I've talked to many, many lawyers and connected with people connected to the justice system, and there seems to be, you know, everything's just a machine. It's just a big bureaucratic machine. Every person in the machine is just doing a minimal sort of job, so it's not really anyone's job to stir up trouble. So um, no one has felt it was their duty to get involved or um, assist at all with rectifying uh, the damage done by the acts of suppressing um, civil rights in public boardroom and and the action of not redressing that ever uh, and repeatedly sort of uh, justifying it. Just the, the impact is just ongoing until the system finally says this was wrong. Uh, this is not what should have happened. These are many different ways the situation could have been handled um, in a professional manner until adequate legal information was provided. Um, there's no reason for this. If, if simply if Robert's rules of order were followed, uh, then in that very first meeting, it would have been resolved by using Robert's rules of order. The chair could have said, I call this meeting to order. Hey, you're recording this meeting? Well, I'm not sure that's in order. Someone make a point of order. That might be out of order because we have been told it is not legally safe to have a, a commissioner make a recording without the institution also making a recording. And we don't have recording equipment here. We're not set up for that. So I'm going to say that's out of order for now. Um, would you be willing to turn it off um, until we can rectify this? Uh, that would have been okay. It would have been okay to request Commissioner Reddy to turn off the recorder because it's not in order. They weren't. They are not prepared for the consequences. Um, but then Commissioner Reddy said, "I decline. I respectfully decline. I'm going to continue to record the meeting." Then the chair could have said, "Okay. Well, as chair, I'm going to say it is not uh, in the interest of this organization to have a meeting recorded in this manner. Um, I would like to." Uh, exercise a motion to conclude the meeting to minimize the uh, the damage or risk to the institution until we can get a recorder in here and um, record it as an institution. Okay, so a motion to conclude. That could have been the end of meeting one. And then they could have gotten the recording equipment, had a meeting, and then the next meeting would have been this meeting is officially recorded. Commissioner Reddy is also recording on our personal device, but the uh, district is not going to seek custody of that. We are going to focus on our own copy of the recording. So they could have said something like that. But no, instead, instead they tend to, they ask Commissioner Reddy to turn it off and then ask again and then ask again. And then in 2016, they do the same thing. They order him to turn it off and then, you know, justify, justify, justify why they are right and argue for 15 minutes. Commissioner Kolf drags out the conversation by asking, um, what does our policy say? Does our policy say meetings are only recorded on site and not recorded off site? Or do they say they could be recorded off site? This really matters to me, Commissioner Kolf. Commissioner Kolf's a good guy, but I'm sitting there like, why does that matter? Commissioner Kolf, let's suppose the policy did say we will not record meetings off-site. Suppose it did say that. Okay? Uh, suppose the policy said that. Then you guys, after 15 minutes, you decide that. Then what would you want to do, Commissioner Kolf? What would that change? Now you're sitting here, Commissioner Reddy's recording. Now you can all say you're violating policy. Okay? Congratulations. Let's pretend the policy said we will not record meetings offsite. Let's pretend that's true. And Commissioner Reddy says, I'm still recording the meeting. Then everyone can say, you're breaking policy. And Commissioner Reddy could say, yes, I'm breaking policy. 
I guess, if you say so, I'm recording the meeting. And they could say, but you can't break policy. And Commissioner Reddy would say, but I can. Look, I'm doing it. <laughs> and they could say, how can you? And maybe Commissioner Reddy could say, I've changed my mind. I no longer believe in not recording off-site meetings. I've changed my mind personally, and now I'm recording. And they could say, well, we didn't bring our recording equipment, and they could, but instead, they keep on trying to get him to turn it off. What would, what would Commissioner Culp say? Now he knows I'm breaking, let's say I'm breaking a policy by recording the meeting. What is his, is he suddenly gonna be like, well, Matt, I, I believe you're breaking policy, and you're breaking your word to us because you voted on that policy. And I could say, yes, I'm breaking my word. I've changed my mind. And they could say, you're, you're not allowed to change your mind. I'm like, too bad. Yes, I am. I'm changing my mind. <sighs> I don't know. It was just like case call for resolving who, who um, whether the policy said that or not, is completely irrelevant and worthless. Um, I mean, it always comes, it just comes down to, you have a right. If you have a right to do something, how many times can people ask you to stop doing it until they are infringing upon your right? I'm going to stand here. I'd like you to leave. Well, I'm going to stand here. That should be the end of the conversation. And if they keep saying, leave, I want you to leave, and you have to keep saying no, they are now harassing you badgering you. Doesn't matter what reason. They say you should leave because you agreed to leave. Now, if, they, if you agreed on a legal contract, that's something. 